All right, everyone, it's time for occult literature, video number 115, Freyer's Process. Now, this is a relatively short work, 36 pages, part of the alchemy uh, releases that I've been making. I am delving back into that as well as the herbal sort of folklore stuff now. I'm taking sort of a break from some of the side works that I was doing. I'm also going to be re-editing a couple of my own works on occult subjects uh, fairly soon. Uh, as always, link in the description to my edition of this work on Amazon, a second link to my books blog. If it's alchemy you're looking for, look no further. I've got many editions. Uh, most of them are now out in KDP, that is ebook format, which is cheaper, it's digital only. Uh, at the same time, generally speaking, I'm a fan of paperbacks. I like to have a physical book I can actually hold in my hands. They're more attractive. You can carry it around with you as opposed to ebooks. Uh, you need a, a functioning battery or a power supply in order to actually make use of them. Uh, KDP ebooks, just fine. My own preference uh, aside, really. Now, this particular work is a little bit more literal than some, but it has that same spiritual overlap. It's actually a unique work. Most works fall into one of two categories within alchemy. They're either very veiled and they're spiritual. That is, it's basically a chemical manifesto couched in spiritual language and then hidden behind multiple layers of allegory. Uh, there, there's too many works to even list them off here as far as that goes or they are strictly chemical, they're more straightforward, they don't even really necessarily deal with the great work, they just build themselves as alchemy. We'd think of some of the works of Hollandus, certainly a work of Saturn, essentially it's talking about lead or antimony, depending on who you ask, and it's not entirely clear. I lean towards lead as an explanation for that one because of the taste test that's performed on the substances that you're making, which I don't recommend. Eating lead is probably a bad idea, I think it could make you sick. I <laughs> guess Hollandus uh, didn't really care at the time. But this work is both more straightforward and on the spiritual side. That is, it's, it's fairly explicit in detailing that the alchemical processes that it's listing uh, are meant to be taken literally. That is, they are physical processes, but they overlap with the spiritual, and it actually admits that fact. And it's basically a retelling uh, of some of the thousands of pages of mystic content from prior alchemists that are being re-detailed by Frere at the time. Uh, so in that case, he's so, what he's sort of doing is trying to clear up and make more transparent mystical materials from actually past centuries to make them more literal, to bring them in line, I guess, for what was then a modern audience. We're still talking about centuries ago. But it's only 36 pages in length, a relatively short manuscript, but one that's definitely worth reading for anybody who's interested in the topic of alchemy. Now, you'll get few works. It essentially takes the Rosarium Philosophorum, the Rosary of the Philosophers, one of the most famous alchemical texts, boils it down to under 40 pages, takes away a lot of the metaphor, a lot of the veils, and is, of course, not illustrated. Uh, takes that com uh, and comprises this smaller text, which basically tells the same general story, a little bit less detail, and then at the end, and this is a, a common feature across many alchemical texts, uh, we, we must say in all honesty, uh, says, oh, there's more I could tell you, but I'm not going to tell you it because this should be sufficient for your, your great work. Uh, that's a common feature across many alchemical texts. I've seen almost verbatim that same line a half a dozen times. Uh, so it's, it's strictly, it's interesting within the realm of alchemy. If that's your field of study within the occult, if you're interested in these sort of writings, we're talking Renaissance through the Enlightenment actually, on the Philadelphian gold, I believe, is from the early 1800s, if I remember correctly. It's actually past the 18th century. Uh, if that's your interest, this is a work that would come highly recommended. It would, it would be up there with work of Saturn for the more physical side, with the Rosary of the Philosophers for the very lengthy spiritual content, some of these other works of note, uh, despite its length, despite its generally... Uh, you know, generally, people wouldn't know about this work. It's, on, again, on the shorter side, less well-known. But it's one of the best. It'd be right up there with Pontinus' work. That's about all. Peace out.